Hey guys, so I'm making this video to do a quick walkthrough for one of a case study I did for DoorDash interview. And it was for the role of associate slash senior associate for a strategy and operation. And I actually did this interview back in 2023. And the reason I'm doing this video after so long was because I actually documented this in a form of a blog post on Medium last year. And that post was getting a lot of traffic even till this day, like people are still reading it. And there are still a lot of people reaching out to me through my email, asking me the details, asking me for the files. So I was thinking, why not just make a video to give a more detailed walkthrough? And basically, I want to talk about something that was not mentioned in that blog post. Basically, how I approach this problem, how do I think about it? And also for this specific business problem, there's a different approach in real scenario, like you actually in the job versus like, when you're doing an interview like this is how i think about it and the reason i think this could be helpful was because this specific case study like the way i did it got me to the next round i was able to talk to the hiring manager talk to the hiring team and also by no means this is the best or like the optimized solution it's just my way of doing it but i think it can be a great reference so without further ado let's just dive in and first i want to show you guys this email so this was as you can see back in 2023, please complete submit within 40, 48 hours. And essentially they're looking for, they send me like a data set of the operation data. And the final form that they want me to submit was like some slide or report kind of files. So your deliverable should be in a slide deck, less than 10 slides or Word document, less than five pages and should be client ready or product is shared externally. And basically, the way I see this is like, you don't want to get too technical, even though you start from the data, right? You did some data analysis, you did some deep dive into it. And some people can go even further. They can get to the level of what a data scientist would do. They do some predictive modeling, like something very technical. And essentially in your final report, you don't want to, you don't want to show any of that, even though you want to have your work as support, but you want to use plain business language, like some non-technical audience can understand and essentially the results should have some direct business implications ideally it should impact the kpi for example revenue profit or mm, customer number etc and in my opinion with all those case studies within the similar form where you're given a data set and you you're asked to answer certain questions this one is actually a simpler one like you have the full autonomy, right? You could do whatever that works for you. You can pick whatever you're comfortable with instead of having to answer the specific questions that you are not familiar with. Like sometimes you don't have the specific business domain to answer certain questions, right? You have to do more research. But for this one, you can just pick whatever angle you you want to dive into. So I just pasted the content here in a document so it's easier to, to read. And then another consideration I had when I was doing this case study was that even though this case study or any case study of this similar form is intended to be a simulation of the real job scenario, this is still an interview. So you have to take a look on the job description. When I was looking at the strategy and operation job description from DoorDash, it's not like they don't really emphasize the technical aspects too much. And in fact, they don't even require SQL. I remember back in the days, they were like, it's okay. You, you can learn SQL on the job. Like we don't require SQL. It's not a hard requirement. And for me, the implication for that is for this case study, I want to emphasize, I want to show more of my work on the business aspects, on the strategic aspect, on how I structure my thinking in a logical and structured way. Like that's something I want to demonstrate in this case study. Aside from that, there's a glossary where you can pause the video on this page to take a deeper look. Essentially it covers a lot of the, the raw data that's been collected from the operation of the, of the business. And then next I will show the data here that they provided and like I mentioned earlier, this is actually a easier case study that I ever have because you don't need to do too much cleaning here, except that if you want to dive to, uh, you, you want to dive deeper into the time data, you, you might want to do some cleaning here, like reformatting. So it's easier for your analysis. And, uh, and these are just regular other operational data. Um, 
you know, restaurant ID. Each ID represents a different restaurant, and these are pretty straightforward, to be honest. So if you pause the video here, you can、um, take a deeper look on what are the data here. So basically, for me, after understanding what the data I have here, like everything I have, what I can work with,、um, the first step for me is like to try to understand the business model for the company. And、um, this is a very classic three-sided marketplace. And the way I try to understand it is I, I do some research, and then I try to understand how the money flows, like from a financial aspect, where how do mon- money flow from point A from the customer to point B and then point C, and then how do they coordinate these two different other parties、um, as a DoorDash? And actually, same model goes with Uber and like other marketplace platforms, and then. Another thing I try to understand is like how does the funnel work, right? So I try to start from the customer customer journey. How do they get the customer, and then what have the customer been through throughout this whole transaction process to the end? And then how does the merchant work? How were they involved in this whole process? And then the dasher, basically the delivery guy, how were they involved in this whole process? What are their journey looking like? And this is. How I try to understand their business, and then try to tie everything that I was thinking about, like what they've been through in this whole journey, to the data I have. Like for example, if I'm looking at this place order data, I can see how long it took for the customer、uh, when they did their first action of, you know, they're doing some action on their phone to place an order, and then they see some details afterwards. They, they got some notification until the point they got the food. And then same process go with the dasher, and basically this is how I get a higher level of what's going on, and then I try to dive deeper into the business operation. Like I want to find out if there is any new business opportunities here, or in the current operation process, is there something going on? Is there something that's like not optimized that I can see from the data? Can we do something about it? And also. Like I said, the business opportunity is like something we can capture. Like, is there any underserved area, for example, that's just off the top of my head, right? So, in my original post, this is how I break this problem down. I try to break this into three buckets, like the logistics, and then revenue, which is the financial aspects, and then services. So, services, in my opinion, is like less tangible. Like, it's harder to quantify. You know, something like. Service satisfaction, you know, tips can be an indicator of the service and refund. So, this is the way I categorize this. But if I'm to look at this problem today, I think another way to to do this is to basically start from the three sided marketplace. Start from the par- different parties, like how are the customer involved? What are something we can do about the customer journey? How can we improve a certain process of the customer journey? And then same with the dasher and the merchant, right? This is another angle to dive into this. And essentially, you want to go with the the common management consulting approach, where you want to be messy, you want to have this framework ready to think about the problem. And and this is how you analyze a business problem like this, right? You wanna you wanna be structured. So it's not about having the right answer. It's it's just about how you approach this problem. So I'll just quickly show my work here before I show you the final output. Like the slides slash reports, whatever you want to call it. So I did some data cleaning for the data I looked into,、um, and then I just basically use pivot table here, and everything is hard coded here because I initially did it in Excel, and then I just uploaded to Google Sheets. So there's no formula here, but as you can see, this is how I did it. And then for the presentation, I just like. I did some screenshot. I copy these tables over and then visualize them. Excel isn't the only place you can do it. Like there are lots of other tools, especially like if you're handling a larger amount of data, you want to use use SQL and some of the other tools. So it's just a means to an end. That's not the key part. And this this slide actually is so ugly. Looking back now, it's just like very plain, very boring, and. I start with an overview page, basically analyzing this problem. What do I dive into here, and、um, also clarify the goal. What are the things that we want to achieve? So then things are more clear. So looking at this now, if I'm to think that the purpose of this whole report is to get buy-in, is to influence 
some stakeholders' decision making. Like if I'm actually on the job, I will probably do this slide in a different way. I'll probably start with the、um, the result first. Like what are the so what part? What do we want to do? Like what are the actions we want to take? Start with a conclusion. This top down approach is actually more impactful and、uh, and more persuasive to make this whole thing clear because. Usually, when you're doing a presentation, people are gonna you're gonna lose their attention midway through, right? Like all these pages, they're not gonna look at every single work you have done. So you want to show them the conclusion first. So I think for this slide, this is something I I wasn't doing very well. I would start with the conclusion, and then for each of the buckets I dived into, I just、um, show a very surface level data analysis that I that I did. And then one thing I I think I I did good, which I recommend for everyone is like you want to highlight the conclusion here, like what do you see in this data, what are the insights, and then also on the graph, you want to do something like this to kind of highlight to kind of manipulate your audience's attention, and these are just something aesthetic wise, which is not that important in my opinion. But obviously, for anyone that's coming from a banking or a consulting background, this whole slide looks. Really bad, I know. And、um, essentially, for any different data, you want to decide how do you want to visualize that to make it more intuitive to point to a certain conclusion or certain insights. So as you can see in this one, I use a different way to demonstrate the outcome, and the idea is still the same. You want to just call things out. You want to call the the key conclusion, the key insight out, and then use some bullets to kind of show. What I did, even though in real work, in real presentation, people are probably not gonna look really closely into these into these bullets. Same with this. So, I would say overall, the analysis part is pretty straightforward. Like the work is not that complicated. Like like I said, I want to avoid getting too technical. I want to avoid getting too deep into the data. Even realistically, that's something you probably want to dive into to kind of explore new business opportunities, right? And、um, finally, I have two final pages where I recommend it for next steps. And then with each of those bullets, I categorize them into something like maintaining current profitability, scale up business, scale up business, and achieve long term sustainability. Basically, call out the time scope of each of the to do. And then I think the actionable step is actually the key part of your case study or your whole presentation because. The working with stakeholder part and get buy-in is actually a key part of this strategy and operation job. Where you want to spend more time on this slide, or it could be even more more than one slide, right? You want to properly frame your language in a way where it's concise enough, but also point to a specific conclusion. And then, as you can see here, I kind of categorized these、um, bullets into some、um, into the based on the time scope. Right, like something current, maintaining current profitability, scale up business. These are different goals, and then these are something long term, where it might be something we don't want to allocate resource into immediately. Like we want to solve some short term problems first. Looking back on this slide after two years, I think I could have made this whole slide more concise. Like this is still too much text here. People are not gonna read. I want to make it more maybe punchy and、um, more intuitive, and then the final one is like business impact and risk. And、um, for this slide, you want to address the possible pushback and、um, possible challenges. So for this case study at DoorDash, it's actually easier because it's just purely a take-home case, right? Like the follow-up rounds are not something where you need to present. But I don't think that's very common these days. I think these days a lot of companies, when they ask you to do a take home or like any case study, usually the follow round is like something you need to present, like that you spend like forty forty minutes to an hour to present this. And obviously, there will be a lot of follow up questions, a lot of challenges. They will challenge your assumption, like why would you think this way? How did you approach this? Why would you bring up this certain bucket? And I think something a A lot of you want to avoid is like you don't want to approach this whole case study from the angle of a data analyst. You're not like doing an assignment just to look at the data and just like 
dump some insights to your stakeholder because another key part of this role is ownership. Like think about how to persuade and how to get buy-in from stakeholders, how to, for example, get some funding approval, get some res engineering resources. So you really want to focus on the so what instead of putting a lot of effort into getting that data insight. Like that's the job of a data analyst. But this is more like a comprehensive business role, like something more strategic. Also, you need to have some deeper thoughts into how the implementation looks like, how the execution looks like. And in that sense, I think a very likely follow up is like, how are you going to measure the success? Let's just say every single insights you have in this case study is valid and your organization decided to go with your approach. How are you going to measure the success? Like what are the KPIs? What are the data you, you're going to look into and how are you going to gather those data? Be because a lot of the, there could be a lot of ambiguity, right? Like there's some new KPIs you need to develop. How are you going to collect those data? Like what makes sense on a business level? Like this is something you want to think about. So a lot of people are pretty comfortable with data. They're pretty comfortable with di different tools with SQL, but when they're approaching a business problem like this, they're not thinking enough into the execution part. So that's something to, to dive deeper into, which is something that's kind of missing from my case study here. Um, and this is a realization I, I have right now to looking at something I did two years ago. And for each of the recommended action, like some of the conclusion you have at the end, you want to also mention some trade-offs. Like as a business, as a team, you have a limited resources and you cannot just pursue every single option. So mm, I think another way you stand out is like you kind of dive deeper into each of these options. And if we pursue the option, what are something we need to give up? Like what are the trade-offs and also how you will project the outcome of that? And if things are not going that well, what's the plan B? Like, this is what I mean by execution thinking. You need to think a lot on that. And that's, this is how you differentiate yourself from a lot of the people that's only good at the technical aspects, but not having enough business sense. And I think a good way to get better at this is like really understand the business model. And you can read more news, read more business cases to see um, a lot of the different nuances. So then in your specific case study, you can have more things to tell. So that's all for this video. I think I skipped some of the slides pretty quickly, but you can always pause the video and take a look, right? And I did that because looking back on the slide right now, I feel like I wasn't doing, doing that good. Like a lot of things can be, can be improved, can be optimized, but I mean, at least it got me to the next round. So it's a, it's a good reference. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions or what you think in the comments. Also hit that like button if you find this helpful. And um, I'll see you guys in the next. Cheers.